Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jeff. This is Not Just Book Reviews. And today I'm going to be talking about the Conan Barbarian pastiche novels, which, in another words, are the novels that were written not by Robert E. Howard, but by anybody else but Howard. And there are a, a considerable amount of them, actually more non-Howard Conan material than Howard. I think there are only maybe a dozen or more Howard stories about Conan, and it's incredible. Think about the amount of film and comic books, and these pastiche novels far outweigh uh, you know, the output of Howard, which is pretty amazing and a testament to what an incredible character that Howard created. So, strangely enough, after Howard died, and into the 50s and 60s, it was not very easy to get a hold of Conan the Barbarian stories. The stories themselves were published in weird tales and were not collected in any form, as far as I can tell, that was widely mass produced. Uh, then along came two gentlemen, uh, L. Sprague de Camp and Lynn Carter, um, two huge Howard fans, also fantasy writers in their own right. De Camp and Carter both have separate. Uh, original stories and tales that they've written themselves, but they were hugely influenced by Howard and big fans. So they decided that they would do two things. They would collect all of the Howard stories, they would try to put them in some kind of chronological order, and then they would try to take a look at all of the fragments and synopses and unpublished stories that they could get their hands on, and some of these unpublished stories were for other characters. They turned them into Conan stories. Uh, some of these were Conan fragments that Howard just had a synopsis for, uh, and they wound up fleshing them out and, and writing the stories themselves. So DeCamp and Carter, along with Lancer, the original publisher, published 12 collections of Conan stories, new stories by DeCamp and Carter, a, Con a Howard novel, a novel, by Lynn Carter, and they tried to put them in chronological order to tell the overarching story of Conan's life. So um, I came to Conan through these pastiche novels and stories. Uh, before I had read Howard in his, you know, in a correctly edited, unexpurgated format, which come in these wonderful Del Rey editions, starting with The Coming of Conan of Samaria. The second volume is The Bloody Crown of Conan and The Conquering Sword of Conan. These collect all of Howard's complete Conan stories, all of his synopses, fragments, his essays. Um, but before these came out, not in the 60s, it was very hard to get a uh, hold of anything. So um, I want to go through all of the Ace Lancer books and the Bantam books, which the Bantam ones are the ones that I started me off, and then I got to these Lancer ones. But the Lancer uh, collections came first. Uh, and then I want to talk about the Tor novels, which came, and kind of all of the range of all the Howard pastiche novels, which has now come to an end. They're pretty much done uh, being produced. So the very first one was simply called Conan, number one, and it was a Frank Frazetta cover, and Frank Frazetta did a lot of these covers. So the good thing about this one was it starts off with um, the Hyborian Age, which is a Howard essay. Uh, laying out the world of Conan, which is fantastic. Um, then it's followed by Thing in the Crypt, which is a Elsprague de Camp, Lynn Carter short story. And in fact, this story plays a part in the John Milius Conan the Barbarian film. When Conan is, has left the pit and is free, uh, he finds this sword in a cave and fights a uh, sort of zombie king to get it. This is the thing in the crypt story from DeCamp and Carter. Um, the next story is The Tower of the Elephant, which is a Howard original story, very early. The first Howard story kind of chronologically in Conan's career. Then uh, there's a story called Hall of the Dead, which was a synopsis by Howard and fleshed out by DeCamp and Carter. Uh, God in the Bowl, which is a Robert E. Howard story. Rogues in the House, another Robert E. Howard complete story. A story called Hand of Nergal, which was a fragment, a Conan fragment written by Howard, finished by Lynn Carter. And then finally, City of Skulls, which was an original Conan story by DeCamp and Carter. So all of those are collected in Conan number one. Then you have Conan number two, Conan of Samaria. 
And going forward, I'll have these up on the screen since I don't own the rest of them. They're actually out of print and very hard to get and very expensive nowadays, which is kind of interesting since most Howard devotees will go to the Delray editions or the Carl or the Carl Edward Wagner editions that came out in the 70s, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but these, um, I would like to have them for nostalgia, but I, it's, I'm not going to part with <laughs> hundreds of dollars to get them. So it's interesting. So Conan of Samaria, um, the second of these volumes, Frank Frazetta did the cover. Wonderful artwork on the Ace Lancer books. Um, wonderful. Uh, Boris Vallejo and, and Frank Frazetta kind of traded off, and they're both you know brilliant fantasy artists. So it starts off, this one is The Curse of the Monolith, which is a, one of my favorite pastiche Conan stories, written by DeCamp and Carter, uh, very much in the Howard vein, Lost City. Conan teams up with someone, they go into the city, uh, hijinks ensue, there's a Lovecraftian element to it. Really great story. Then the second story in this uh, edition is called The Bloodstained God. So this is based on an unpublished Kirby O'Donnell story. So Kirby O'Donnell was a Robert E. Howard character, kind of an adventurer. Uh, the Kirby O'Donnell story was called Curse of the Crimson God, and it was unpublished. Uh, so DeCamp and Carter took it, they made it a Conan story, and published it in this volume. Um, yeah, Kirby O'Donnell seems to be a progenitor, kind of a Alan Quartermain um, knockoff, you know, pre-Indiana Jones treasure hunter character from Robert E. Howard. So I'm curious to read Howard's original um, any of his original Kirby O'Donnell stories now that I've heard about this character. So the next story in this collection is The Frost Giant's Daughter. Now, this is interesting because Robert E. Howard wrote this story as a Conan story. It was rejected by his publishers. He rewrote it, and instead of Conan, he wrote it with a character named um, Amra Akpitana. So just a non-Conan, you know, a one-off character, I think, that never recurred in Howard's works, I think. Uh, I don't haven't read most of Howard, but it seemed from the research that this was a one-off, um, and then published it. So DeCamp and Carter took the story, put Conan back into it, and uh, put it in this volume. Uh, it's called The Frost Giant's Daughter. Then there's The Lair of the Ice Worm, which is a uh, DeCamp and Carter original. Uh, Queen of the Black Coast, which is a Robert E. Howard original, un untouched. Veil of Lost Women, also a Howard story. Um, the Castle of Terror, which is an original Conan story by DeCamp and Carter. Uh, and Snout in the Dark, which was a story fragment by Howard, uh, finished by DeCamp and Carter. So, uh, volume three of this series was Conan the Freebooter. And the cover art here, as you can see, was done by Boris Vallejo, a wonderful artist. And in this collection, it uh, starts out with a story called Hawks Over Shem. And this was a Diego de Guzman story, another Robert E. Howard character. Uh, and it was called Hawks Over Egypt. Uh, and it was published in that way. So um, Guzman is this Castilian hero, uh, Spanish hero. I'm not sure what timeline he's in, but it seems like he might be kind of Crusades era. Um, I'm not really sure because I don't know the story. But it was uh, originally... That was what Howard intended it to be. Uh, DeCamp and Carter got hold of it, um, replaced Diego with Conan, put it in this volume as Hawks Over Shem. Um, the next story is Black Colossus, which is a Howard original published unexpurgated. Shadows in the Moonlight, another Howard story published unexpurgated. And then a story called The Road of the Eagles, which was... Uh, an Ivan Sablanka story, which was another ha Howard character. Um, and this character is a hero within the Ottoman Empire. So it's probably in Sword Woman, I would think. Uh, that's the Howard collection that has most of the historical fiction. So um, that was the initial story. Uh, and then DeCamp and Carter took it and pulled him out, put Conan in, uh, and they published it in, uh, as a Conan story, which which is why these collections drive Howard fans crazy because of the fact that they decided to just do this, right? Uh, and then this volume is rounded out by a story called A Witch Shall Be Born, which is a Robert E. Howard original. Um, the next, which is number four, uh, Conan the Wanderer, and this has a wonderful Boris Vallejo cover as well. Uh, it starts off with a story called Black Tears, which is a DeCamp and Carter original, followed by Shadows and Zambula, The Devil and Iron, which are both Robert E. Howard original stories that are not touched. Then there's a story called The Flame Knife. The Flame Knife was originally an El Borak story, which is another Robert E. Howard character, um, an Arab, I believe. Uh, I haven't read any of the stories, but the uh, El Borak story 
is called Three Bladed Doom. And I think it was published. Um, but again, at the time in the 60s, all of these stories featuring characters other than Conan, you know, you couldn't, they were gone and weird tales and no one really knew about them. So I think DeCamp and Carter pulled out the, the, the ones they could adapt to a fantasy setting. And this was probably one of them. So an El Borak story uh, called Three Bladed Doom. Um, and that is the final story in Conan, The Wanderer. The next volume was called Conan the Adventurer, and uh, this features a Frank Frazetta cover. And there were four stories in this edition. Um, People of the Black Circle, which is a Howard original. The Slithering Shadow, another Howard original. Drums of Tombalku, which was a fragment slash synopsis by Howard, which then DeCamp finished into that story. And Pool of the Black One, which is another Howard original. So this was probably the, one of the more Howard-ish uh, collections. Uh, the next one is called Conan the Buccaneer, and this has cover art by Frank Frazetta. And this is a Conan novel basically just written by DeCamp and Carter uh, about Conan's days as a buccaneer um, on the sea. Uh, the next volume is called Conan the Warrior, and this has another Frank Frazetta cover. Um, this is all Howard unexpurgated. So this contains Red Nails, Jewels of Gwalar, and Beyond the Black River, which is my personal favorite. Uh, the next um, one in this series is called Conan the Usurper, and this is another Frank Frazetta cover. And this contains four stories. One is called The Treasure of Tranicos, which actually is... Uh, the Black Stranger, which is Conan on the coast, um, kind of the Pictish coast, looking for treasure. Um, so it was edited and uh, called The Treasure of Tranicos, but it's a Howard story in the Howard collections you can find called The Black Stranger. It's a great story. Uh, it's a story called Wolves Beyond the Border, which was a non-Conan fragment written by Howard. Uh, the to Camp and Carter turns it into a Conan story and wrote it. Uh, and then the last two were Phoenix on the Sword, which I think was the very first published Conan story, and The Scarlet Citadel, which both of those were unexpurgated Howard stories. Then the next novel, this is Conan the Conqueror. Uh, this is a Frank Frazetta painted cover. And this is basically Howard's novel, The Hour of the Dragon, uh, retitled. And I don't think there are any edits because in the the contents page, <clears throat> DeCamp's name isn't shown anywhere. So I think they just republished it as Howard's novel. I don't know why they retitled it, but they did. Then the next novel, uh, volume, which is volume 10, uh, Conan the Avenger, which is a Frank Frazetta painted cover. And this is a complete Conan novel as well um, by Bjorn Nyberg. And the novel is called The Return of Conan, but I guess they titled the book itself Conan the Avenger. So who the hell, who knows what they were what they were doing? Um, uh, number eleven in this series was Conan of Aquilonia, and it has a cover painting by Boris Vallejo. Um, this is all DeCamp and Carter, uh, no Howard here at all. And uh, there are four stories: Witch of the Mists, Black Sphinx of Nebthu, Red Moon of Zimbabwe, and Shadows in the Skull. Are those four stories? And then the final book in this series, number twelve, is Conan of the Isles, which has a wonderful Boris Vallejo cover. This is Conan, purportedly Conan's last adventure, and it's a novel written by uh, Elspreg de Camp um, that sends Conan across the Western Ocean towards America, basically, um, abandoning the Hyborian nations because of something that's come across the nation that's destroying his, his subjects and his country. So he heads across for a last adventure. It's really fun. I really like it. Um, so that's the 12 of that series uh and of all of those i like conan of the isles and i really like um of conan of samaria i really like the uh curse of the monolith really really good story but so i read those when i was young and i didn't know what was howard i, I saw howard's name i saw all these authors names next to the stories and I really didn't know. I was too young to know anything about those kinds of things. And so I just, I read them and it was Conan kicking butt and uh, it was awesome. So it's, I really enjoyed them very much. I'd like to have them in my collection uh, at some point, someday. I only have the first one right now, but um, yeah, they're very expensive and they're hard to find on eBay. So, okay. So <clears throat> this ended, I think the last Conan of the Isles was 1968. And then the next bit of Howard, so Carl Edward Wagner, uh, who's a big fantasy writer in his own right, um, decided that he's had enough of these clowns, what they were doing to his beloved Robert E. Howard. 
he got all of the surviving Howard stories and he edited them and put them together in a three volume series uh, published by Berkeley. I think it was published in 1977. Uh, first one was called Hour of the Dragon. Second one was called People of the Black Circle, and the third one was Red Nail. So the Hour of the Dragon obviously was the Howard novel, and then the, f the other two volumes were collections of his short stories. So that, that was the first time you could get Howard in novel form, from what I can tell. So now we come to Bantam Books. Um, that started publishing Conan Pastiche collections in uh, 1978. So these are how I discovered Conan. Uh, the very first one, um, Conan the Swordsman, was the very first Conan book I ever read. Somebody bought it for me, I think, for a Christmas. Um, I saw the cover. I was like, what is this amazing stuff? I had already read Tolkien, so I kind of had the bug placed in me. Um, and it's a collection of Conan stories, nothing written by Howard. This is all DeCamp and Carter. Um, and they're, they're decent stories. I have to go to bat for the very first story, which is called Legions of the Dead. And I think it's a terrific Conan pastiche story. Uh, it's Conan raiding with, I think, the Vanir uh, up in Hyperborea and these adventures that take place. And it's kind of a creepy ending, kind of a downer ending where Conan's taken captive um, by the Hyperboreans. So really, really enjoyable story. Uh, the rest of the stories are hit and miss. Uh, again, they're all written by DeCamp and Carter, um, not Howard himself. So this was the very first one in 1978, Conan the Swordsman. Um, in 1979, they published Conan the Liberator. Now, the Liberator was a novel by Al Sprague de Camp, and this purported to tell the story of how Conan became king of Aquilonia, which Howard had left out of his stories. So, we, you know, with Howard's stories, we kind of discover Conan at some point. Uh, he just happens to be king of Aquilonia. Well, de Camp decided, let's tell the story about how we got there. So, this is an enjoyable pastiche novel, uh, and de Camp knows Conan pretty well. And he's a good writer in his own right. So he did a good job. Um, and I really enjoyed Conan the Liberator. The rest of the Bantam series are hit and miss. The third book is called Conan, uh, Sword of Skelos, which is written by Andrew Offutt. That came out in 79. Um, also in 79 is another really good Conan pastiche novel written by Carl Edward Wagner, who also did the earlier Berkeley collections. It's called Conan, The Road of Kings, and it's a fantastic book. Um, you know, this might be one that Howard fans who also like Wagner might want to give a shot. It's a great Conan novel. Howard knows Conan well. He writes him, you know, probably one of the best uh, in my book. Um, from uh, after Howard. A really good story it takes place in Zingara. It's about it's a revolution. Conan falls in with the revolutionaries, and there's some wonderful ma magic and sorcery that happens in here, and a great finale. So highly recommend uh, Road of Kings to Conan fans. Uh, in 1980, Conan and the Spider God, which was an original novel by De Camp, And then uh, also in 1980, uh, Conan the Rebel by Paul Anderson, uh, who is a sci-fi um, writer of his own right. Um, and then in 1982, uh, Bantam ended it by publishing the novelization of Conan the Barbarian, uh, which was written by DeCamp and Carter for the, the film release. So that was it for Bantam. Um, then after Bantam came Tor. So Tor Books probably has the most pastiche material of any of these other publishers. There's, I mean, there's probably upwards of 20 some odd novels that were done. The first person they got to do this was none other than Wheel of Time's Robert Jordan. So Jordan wrote seven novels uh, of Conan before the Wheel of Time, and this took place in the 1980s. Uh, Conan the Defender, Conan the Invincible, Conan the Triumphant, Conan the Unconquered, Conan the Magnificent, Conan the Destroyer, and Conan the Victorious. And to my mind, it's some of Jordan's best writing, and for a few reasons. First of all, He's not saddled with having to world build and to do a, you know, 14 book series. So a lot of Jordan's flaws as a writer that started to show themselves as you got down the line in The Wheel of Time, uh, he would just, after a certain period of time, he would bring in a whole new set of characters and shift things and uh, plots would stall and other people would come and go. I mean, I haven't gotten past Lord of Chaos myself, but from what I can tell, the series went through a big slog before it picked up again and finished very well, and someday I will read it. Uh, sometimes Jordan has a tendency to uh, assign certain traits to certain characters, such as the pulling of a braid of hair, 
Um, and over novel after novel after novel, um, you can, they can grow tiresome and repetitive. And Jordan continues to do this um, with a lot of his characters in Wheel of Time. And it, it's, my God, it's, it's tiresome. Uh, although I, I do love him. I think he's a good writer. Um, but I think he, some of the best Conan writing is done um, in these books. I mean, he knows the world really well. You can tell that he really did his research. He knows Conan, the character, writes him very well. Conan is very smart. He's tough. He's exactly kind of the way he was with Howard. So he gets Conan. That he was one of the first people to write a full-on Conan timeline. So he attempted to place uh, his books along with the Bantam books and all of Howard's material in some kind of chronological order. I think there's two or three now. Um, or four maybe, this uh, attempts to chronologically place all of the Conan stories, Pastiche and Howard. Um, so you can kind of get the soup to nuts of his career. But uh, Jordan was one of the first who did it, which was kind of cool. So he was into the character enough where he set out and he did this and he published it and people read it. So, so that was kind of cool. Um, so Jordan wrote one after the other. There were no other Conan writers while Jordan was writing. The next guy to come along uh, to write uh, the next tour novelist was a guy by the name of John Maddox Roberts. And uh, John Maddox Roberts is famous for writing uh, a series called SPQR, which is a historical detective series. It takes place, I think, at the, the end of the Roman Republic, beginning of the empire. Uh, the first novel is called King's Gambit, which I'll flash up here briefly. Um, but I came across Maddox uh, from the first of his past niche novels, which is Conan the Valorous. And Conan the Valorous is probably my favorite pastiche novel. I think second is maybe uh, Carl Edward Wagner. Um, it's a terrific Conan novel, and the plot is great. He gets Conan really well, and a lot of the fun of Valorous is that Conan goes back to Samaria uh, for the first time after being away and, and having lots of adventures. This is a kind of mid-period Conan here. So he's, you know, he's a seasoned warrior, older, and he goes back to Samaria, and how he relates to uh, his old people, right? So again, there's some great Conan writing here. There's actually some really funny stuff that happens here as Conan reacts to his, you know, the old Sumerian ways that he hasn't had to live for a while, the kind of food they eat, how they sleep. So there's some good comedy that Maddox finds in, the, in, in bringing him back home again. Um, and it's a terrific climax. So really good Conan pastiche novel, my favorite. Um, Maddox followed that up with uh, Conan the Champion, uh, Conan the Marauder, Conan the Bold, three novels of, of middling quality. Um, but then uh, Conan the Rogue was next. And Conan the Rogue is another terrific top three or four uh, pastiche novels for me. Conan the Rogue is a retelling of the uh, Akira Kurosawa film Yojimbo, which was also told as A Fistful of Dollars. And in the 80s, the Bruce Willis film Last Man Standing. So Basic plot is, you know, hero comes to town, town is corrupt, filled with all kinds of criminal factions, and how the hero plays them off of each other. And Conan in that role is brilliant because, you know, it's sort of the big dog comes to the little dog pen and they all think they are going to take advantage of him or they, they know ways to, to beat him. And he continues to outwit everyone. And there are like two or three plots in this too. Uh, Maddox really does his homework and there are some really interesting plots about the city itself. Um, you really get to know the city because it all takes place in this city called Sikas. And a really good Conan pastiche novel. So I highly recommend Conan the Rogue. Um, but after Conan the Rogue, pretty much for the rest of the tour run, um, not so great. So after Conan the Rogue, uh, Maddox wrote the Conan and the Treasure of Python, which I don't, I don't think I read. Um, then Conan and the Manhunters, which was very boring. And then he ended it with Conan and the Amazon, uh, trying to pair up Conan with a female of similar stature. She's called Achillea, I guess a female version of Achilles. And it's a really bad book. Um, it's a book that just feels very slapped together. Uh, Maddox Roberts didn't have much of a story, and he kind of told half the story and then retold it from another point of view, which was just egregiously boring. So uh, from, you know, a very uneven writer, uh, went from penning two of my favorite pastiche novels to, um, you know, six other novels that are of very middling quality. So the rest of tour mostly was written by a handful of guys, Steve Perry, Leonard Carpenter, uh, and Roland Green. And the tour series ended in 1997. 
um, except for one last novel. So 1997, uh, I think the last, uh, I forget the name of the last novel, but the last tour pastiche novel came. And then um, years later in 2003, Harry Turtledove came along and published Conan of Venerium, which was actually the last tour Conan to be published. Um, original novel. I think they did some reprints uh, later on. But so Turtle Dove, kind of like DeCamp with Conan the Liberator, decided, hey, you know, part of Conan's legend is that he was 15 years old when uh, the Sumerians attacked the fort of Venarium when the Aquilonians tried to push into their land. And they all banded together as clans, and they basically wiped the place out. And no one ever told that story. None DeCamp never told it. It's never in any of the other stories or novels. So Harry Turtledove, who's famous mostly for his book, The Guns of the South, which is a good novel in its own right. It's about, um, this, you know, apartheid South Africa gets a hold of a time machine and uh, they want to give the American South AK-47s during the Civil War to win the war. It's kind of a funny thing to say out loud, but uh, Turtledove does a great job. He takes it very seriously and it's a very interesting book uh, to see how this all kind of played out. Um, and Robert Lee kind of ends up being the hero uh, in a strange way, uh, which I won't, I won't reveal. But anyway, really cool novel. Um, he also wrote, I mean, Turtle Dove wrote a ton of stuff, but the only other thing that I've read by him was uh, the first book in a series called the Videsos series. I'll pop the first book up here, um, uh, Swords of the Legion. So this purports to be a Roman legion. Uh, they're fighting some Gauls, and uh, this Gaul has a strange-looking sword, and all of a sudden, after part of a battle, there's a big flash, and... The, I think the Gauls and the Romans are both transported to this uh, mystical fantasy land called Videsos. So they have to figure out who's there um, and, and discover you know, how do we now function here um, as a legion? Do we uh, align with other powers and so on and so forth? And uh, the first novel was pretty good. I, I don't remember why I didn't finish the rest of them, but they're pretty short novels. It's a four novel series. Uh, it's called uh, The Videsos Cycle. Um, so I thought when I when I saw it, I'm like, oh, he's going to do a Conan story. This might be pretty good. And about Venarium, hey, you know, this is, what a great idea. Uh, and then the novel got shellacked by Conan and non-Conan fans alike. Just the word that I got was that it was terrible. So I didn't bother. Um, I mean, if it's that bad, I mean, fantasy fans tend to be pretty easy on their heroes and their novelists, you know, and this one really received terrible reviews. So I kind of bagged it. Um, so that was 2003. Then 2005, 2006, uh, they released a video game called The Age of Conan, and they released 12 novels based on that video game world. None of them, I think, uh, included Conan as a character. Then uh, from 2006 to 2011, nothing. And then in 2011, obviously, the reboot film came out with Jason Momoa, uh, and there was a, Michael, um, a novel published uh, novelization of the film by Michael Stackpole, who's a science fiction writer. Um, and that was it. Stackpole's novel is the very last Conan pastiche novel uh, done in 2011. Um, obviously, Marvel Comics is an entire pastiche world, which I don't have any experience of. So um, if you're interested, too, in, in, in more and more Conan, which you should be, uh, Marvel Comics started publishing Conan comics in the 70s, and I think they still have a title now. I think maybe they flipped to another company and then back to Marvel. But um, they're pretty well regarded. Um, there were a couple of titles. Um, some of Marvel's best illustrators uh, were involved in them. So um, they're supposed to be very good, but I never read them, and I don't really have any interest. I, I like my Conan as a uh, character on the page, not so much visual um, in any kind of medium. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of the Conan pastiche world. I just wanted to go through it because it was how I came to Conan. And it's amazing to think that what a compelling character that Howard created that I came to know and love a character through all these pastiche writers before I even got to Howard. And how wonderful when I finally did get to Howard to think, oh, okay, no, this is, this is how Conan should be written. And to me, even though I was initially introduced to the pastiche world, uh, Howard's still head and shoulders above all of them today. You know, it's great where I kind of, I have a new, a new love for Conan through Howard, even though I have a nostalgia for the pastiche writers. So um, anyway, um, I got a lot of interesting information on this Conan wiki 
Um, it's conan.fandom.com. It's a terrific Conan wiki, a lot of good information. Uh, I'll uh, link that down in the description box. Um, if you're interested in just kind of getting lost in Conan one afternoon and seeing uh, all the, I think pretty much everything that's ever been done about him, probably the Marvel Comics stuff is in there. Um, I didn't look for that though, but um, it's a great wiki and um, it was fun to kind of poke through. So that's my take on the Conan pastiche world. Thanks for watching.